Hello. Thank you for joining today's MIDAS and Epic's basic training webinar. Uh, before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Piotr Stepien and I'm CE engineer. Uh, I'm working in MIDAS IT company as the technical support engineer. Today we will spend um, a little time on the basics of MIDAS and Epic software and the basics of FEA analysis. I will remind you some knowledge from linear static analysis and I will show you how to use the pre and post of NFX. Um, at the end I will make short practical example presentation. And this is how does the content looks like. So first I will tell you some introductory information about NFX. After this I'm going to introduce to you uh, working with the geometry and mesh. Next we will refresh the basics from the linear static analysis and I will show you some post-processing functionality which is included in NFX and as I mentioned before we will close today's webinar with practical example presentation. So during today's session please feel uh, please also to feel free in case of any doubts or questions. Uh, there is a chat section as I mentioned before inside your GoToWebinar panel and you can uh, use this to asking us during the presentation. So at the end of the webinar there will be some time and we will answer your questions. Uh, Midas NFX uh, represents fully integrated engineering solution package for virtual simulations using finite element method and application is widely used for all mechanical purposes with additional CFD analysis capability. Software is available as 32 and 64 bit application and it's working on all Windows platforms from let's say XP up to Windows 8. Midas NFX is equipped with user-friendly GUI um, which is an abbreviation from graphical user interface which is widely known from other engineering solutions. So at the top uh, there is a ribbon bar where all tools and comments are grouped. To the left we see a um, panel which consists of three sheets and using these three sheets we have an access to all model entities like material parameters, loads uh, and boundary conditions and results as well. At the center there is a work plane and at the bottom there is a message and output window. Minus NFX it works in two modes, designer mode and analyst mode. This designer mode activates simplified environment and it's oriented for CAD users only or let's say the beginners. So using this mode we can perform simulation quickly and due to that we can receive the basic information about our model behavior or response. So we are using the geometry as the base for our future FEM model. This an environment is restricted to 3D geometry only so we cannot use 2D geometries like sheet metal surfaces or 1D sketches and due to that we are working with solid elements only which are automatically generated from the mesh generators. The second environment, second mode, uh, analyst mode, allows for advanced control of FEA model and this environment is oriented for more experienced and let's say well-educated users. In this mode we have a full control capability on our modeling process. We can work directly with mesh elements or we can say with the mesh elements and or di directly on the mesh. So in this mode we have an access to full element library, all tools which are implemented into MyDAFTS and Evix um, are available. The user has got an access to also to advanced post-processing uh, tools and functions. So using these two modes we can perform all of the kinds of simulations like linear static, non-linear static, in transfer, linear and non-linear dynamic and other. So now let's start talking about working with the geometry. So the basic workflow in the designer mode and generally for the uh, whole FEM process is very simple but in our designer mode is restricted to few steps only. So the job starts from the import of the geometry and with this step we can add contact connection between surfaces if we want um, or not. 
but anyway we can perform cleanup step so the second step is the material properties definition step number three is load and boundary condition assignment after this step the mesh will be generated automatically and step number five is preparation of the analysis case and execution of the analysis so after calculations the user will check and display the results and we can also generate customized report from the analysis and this was the step number six so now let's take a look on some geometry data exchange so first of all in case of import we can use uh, the most popular extensions like uh, STP, Parasolid, ACES, uh, Geometry from CATIA version 4, version 5, um, SOLIDWORKS files, ProEngineer, AutoCAD and STML. So in case of export, we can export only, uh, uh, only XT, which is Parasolid file, and, uh, and that's all. In case of CAE data exchange, we can uh, we can use only Nastran format these days, but very soon the FIMAP answers and abacus will be implemented. So now let's take a look on some interesting features which uh, are available in the designer mode. And as I said, uh, the geometry uh, can be imported from many external CAD systems. So usually these geometry models are made by, by CAD designer we, uh, who are not familiar with the CAE philosophy. So these cre uh, geometries um, can include many times lots of um, unnecessary details like small manufacturing fillets, mounting holes, etc. So this is why we need a tool to delete this unnecessary detail it's very easily. So to do that in MyDAS NFX, we can use simplification tool, and uh, actually the entering the radius is this is the all which is required to set for the size of the sm small entity, and after that the model can be simplified very easily. Design mode includes also another interesting functionality like auto update, and this feature is very useful in case of study many design variations and could be the first step on the way to optimize your product. So when we finish uh, our job with, let's say, a first design of our geometry model, there will be no need to repeat all simulation preparation steps with the updated geometry. This is the idea of auto-update. One condition which is required for update your model is keeping the same color, um, color scheme for selected surfaces. And due to that, we can create our own analysis template for all kinds of analysis. Midas NFX is a total solution package, or we can say total integrated package. And this term means that the software includes full pre-processing capability to create your FEA model. In terms of geometry, uh, related tool has been grouped inside the geometry ribbon and from this place we are able to use geometry creation tools, boolean operation, transformation and subject editing. So this is the ribbon bar. Uh, to the left there is a model works tree and under this branch all kinds of your geometry entities will be grouped from the points, solid surfaces exactly the same way. These tools, like uh, I mentioned before, uh, are available from in the analyst mode. So basically we can create all types of the geometry starting from point and ending on solid. So to create the geometry, uh, to create the geometry, we can use, for example, polylines, arcs, circles. Uh, after that, we can transform these entities to 2D and 3D objects. We can extrude, revolve, sweep, and lock the geometry. 
and to create the solid geometry we can use also primitive shapes like boxes, cylinders, spheres uh, and if we want to edit imported geometry we will use explode function to get uh, the lower level shapes and Midas Analytics provides also some measure, measurement and transformation tools. Okay, on the next slide we see a few examples of the geometry features. So using Boolean operation we can fuse the geometry cut and M. So I think there is again some delay so I will wait a few seconds. Okay, so using this Boolean operation we can fuse the geometry cut and end so framing and sewing is also supported. But we have to remember one fact that Midas NFX uh, is not a CAD tool and I am talking about this every time because Midas NFX is primary purpose is, is CAE. So practical point of view it will be always more effective to use CAD application to create your geometry. And at this moment, it's also good to mention about mid-surface extraction process. So, FEA professionals know very well that trying to mesh and solve a model with solid volumes needs much bigger resources and time. So, in cases where it's possible to use shell elements, and these cases uh, like sheet metals and other models with thicknesses, uh, we remodel the geometry with mid surfaces to make meshing and solving and solving process faster. So this modeling should be done uh, taking into account the conjunctions of pieces and other interaction details that should be taken into account by the measure and solver. Extraction in MyDAS and Edix can be done in three ways: automatic semi-automatic and manual. And on the screen we saw the aeroplane wind example of mid-surface application. So we just finished this short introduction uh, about working with the geometry and right now I would like to talk a little bit about uh, working with the mesh in MIDAS NFX. So first let me introduce our finite element library. So to create a FEM model we can use all of, of the most popular elements like solid elements for example so into this group this group consists of tetrahedrons, pentahedrons, hexahedrons and pyramids and these elements are used mostly to mesh solid parts in, in your assemblies. 2D elements like shells, plane stress elements, plane strain, axisymmetric elements, composite shells uh, this uh, typical purpose for them are uh, pressure vessels, sheet metal brackets, composite wings, roofs, etc. One dimensional elements like beams, rods and pipes, two model structures like trusses, frames, bridges and scalar elements like springs, masses, dampers, fasteners and MPC elements. MPC elements, this Abbreviation means elements where it's possible to define kinematic, kinematical relationship between the nodes and other elements. Uh, let's take a view on the solid mesh. So solid meshing or 3D meshing uh, inside NFX will be performed using effective automatic automated mesh generators. So as I said before, MITAS NFX works as 64-bit application. So due to this uh, the time needed for discretization process, and I will tell you, you a little bit later what, what it is, uh, will be less consuming. Discretization, actually this is a, a process when you divide your geometry into the elements. So our application will use all of available processor cores or fleets and the result will be 50% of the time reduction, for example if you use for the core example. So meshing algorithms will also perform local dancing 
process of the mesh in areas of sudden geometry shape change like notches, holes and others. For today MIDAS NFX is using following meshing algorithms. For 2D meshing we have a the, the launai, the loop and grid measure, but for 3D there is a high speed tetra measure and hybrid measure. Hybrid measure is using all of solid element types like tetras, tetras, pentas and pyramid element um, and assures let's say continued or fluent transition between the hexa and tetra element. Using this type of measure um, type widely contribute to minimization of the FEM model size. So let's take a look on, on the example. So if we use uh, if we use the tetrahedral elements only, then the size of our model will be close to 160 nodes. But if we use the hybrid measure, the size will be decreased to 60,000 nodes. So similar to uh, to working with the geometry, we have an access to the advanced mesh modeling tools, so we can create all of types uh, of the elements starting from the node and ending on the solid element. Using this group of tools, uh, we can control the size of the mesh using several control methods like length, division, ratio and symmetry. We can check the property of the mesh, we can create mesh sets, groups, we can collect the nodes in the tables, we can connect and disconnect nodes. So, we, uh, similar to geometry, we can also protrude, revolve, and perform other operations. So, a few examples about working with the mesh, uh, the meshing tools are shown on, on the next slide. So, to the left, we see the cardboard example, which was made through revolve command, some kind of uh, simple extrusion, projection, we can offset our elements, we can fill in between some mesh surfaces and sweep. So machine tools and let's say previously described are widely widely used for high quality mesh generation. So on the next slide we see some uh, examples which were made using kind of automated technique and this kind of high quality mesh will assure high quality of the results uh, without any doubts about internal discontinuities or let's say bad, bad quality elements. Okay, now let's say a few words about FEA basics, linear static analysis and its most important assumptions. So what is this about? What is the linear static analysis? So we can answer these questions using one sentence. In a linear static analysis, displacements, strains, stresses and reaction forces under the effect of applied loads are calculated. But this is not all because a series of assumptions are made with the respect to this phrase. So let me explain a few things related to linear, linearity, for example. So first assumption is, uh, is related to the material property. So all of the linear solvers assume that all material behaves in a linear elastic manner. So for example, if you double the loads, the response of the model, like displacement, strains and stresses, will be also doubled. You can make the linearity assumptions if all materials in the model comply with Hooke's law, that is stress is directly uh, proportional to strain. The second assumption is small deflections and rotations and this means that, in, that the inductive displacement are small enough to ignore the change in, in stiffness caused by loading and rotations should be also less uh, and small and from practical point of view should be around less than 10 degrees. That assumption is related to constant boundary conditions so supports do not vary during the application of loads and loads must be constant in magnitude, direction and distribution. So they should not change while, while the model is deforming. Static means that all loads are applied slowly and gradually until they reach uh, their full magnitudes. 
So after reaching the full magnitudes, loads remain constant, which means they are they are remain constant, so time invariant, we can say. And this assumption allows us to neglect inertial and damping forces um, in the model, let's say. So I have just mentioned that material data used in linear static is assumed to be um, in a linear, linear elastic re region. So if we take a look on the stress strain curve, we can recognize two regions, elastic and plastic which is subdivided into yielding, strain hardening, and necking. The uh, relationship which is describing this elastic region, region it looks like following sigma, which is stress, equals to epsilon multiplied by Young modulus. Young modulus is defined as the slope of the line in the elastic range. So the governing equation uh, is given by force vector equals to stiffness matrix multiplied by displacement vector. And this relationship is used by the solvent to calculate deflections and after that convert them to stress. And both of the equations, like this one and this one, on, um, are of course equivalent. So why we need finite element method to calculate, for example, uh, some solid mechanics problems. So the answer is like following. For simple shapes, simple structures, it's very easy to obtain enough accurate solutions using basic solid mechanics formulas. But to solve complex problems, this technique is not efficient, it's time consuming and very hard to implement. So now let's take a look on the examples uh, shown to the left. For each model representation, we can write some mathematical model and describe behavior using differential equations with some basic boundary conditions which are necessary to obtain the solution. So once again, this is, uh, this is efficient uh, when we want to analyze simple systems. To analyze complex systems, it will be very difficult and I can say even impossible to describe them using uh, differential equations and solve them. And this is why the idea of the uh, replacement difficult to solve differential equations by easy to solve linear algebraic equations is the one of the basics of FE uh, finite element method. So obtained solution will differ from precise solution from uh, will differ from precise solution from the mat and mathematical model, but in terms of tolerance and accuracy, it will be enough to provide you some good engineering approximation. So how does the, the looks like in, in inside the software? So let's imagine that we have uh, some structural continuum which we want to analyze. And through discretization process, this continuum will be divided onto elements and nodes. And this process is called meshing or discretization. So if we look closer on the mesh, we have to understand that element consists of some number of nodes and elements. And these elements represent an idea of replacement or of the replacement of the differential equations by simple linear algebraic solution equations. So at every element the, there is some equation to solve. So when we are applying the material and element properties, some stiffness can be built, can be provided to the system. So when we apply load on our structure, there is possible to build some one global stiffness matrix, in that case, for the structure. And due to that, we can solve requested displacements. And to build the stiffness matrix, or in other words, to, let's say to assure the stiffness of your or our system, we need two types of data. We need material property and element property. For our linear assumption, we need to specify Young elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio. And these data can be provided through material dialog box in NFX. So as we see, inside structural parameters, we can specify as well mass density and some thermal expansion data. 
it's not necessary to enter them every time. For example, mass density will be required if we want to consider influence of the gravity law, for example. Uh, there is one more interesting field in the material card, factor of safety. So in terms of the tension the limit will be specified. The so software will calculate safety margin according to this number. Element property is related to cross sectional parameters and dimensions of used elements. So thanks to this data we provide information like cross section area, thickness, moment of inertia, which are necessary to fulfill the global uh, stiffness definition. The material data can be specified manually and as I, um, as I mentioned before. So additionally, Midas NFX has been equipped with the material library which consists of more than 1,000 material definitions. So metals, non-metals and plastics uh, are available and to assign the material uh, with the part we are using simple uh, drag and drop functionality. So it's also possible to create um, own material a library or set up the default material. So now let's take a look on boundary condition application. So they can be applied on geometrical objects like points, curves, surfaces, faces of solids and on mesh entities like nodes and like nodes as well. So the user has got several options to apply right constraints or support. So we can use default constraint definitions like fixed, pinned, symmetric definition or check required degrees of freedom depending on our need. So constraints can be specified based on the selected reference coordinate system or reference object as well. Now let's take a look on the sketch at the center of, of the slide. So we see the block with six available uh, degree of freedoms. Uh, in this case, this body can move along three directions, x, y, and zeta, and rotate around three axes, the same, x, y, and zeta. So when we want to block all movements on some direction, we have to select uh, on, or some direction, we allow, actually we have to block all of them. So. Uh, so we have to s click on the fix button which will constrain all degrees of freedom and set them in the uh, completely constrained condition. For example, pin constraints uh, allow only allow rotation and no tra translation of the structure just like uh, fixing an object by using a pin will be provided. So good manner is also to use symmetry plane um, as the constraint condition where we our object modeling has got symmetrical shape, symmetrical constraints and loading. So let's take a look on the picture below. So this is an example of symmetric model and an analysis in, in reference to half of the symmetry model can be expressed by the results of the overall model in the post processor. So in this type of analysis, the magnitude of, of load also must be converted properly according to the symmetry of the model. So in our case, uh, if we take a look on this picture, the magnitude will be the same, but uh, when the model had got, uh, has got two symmetric planes, the magnitude of the load must be divided properly. And similar to boundary conditions, load can be applied directly on um, directly to geometry or mesh, which means nodes and elements, and we can apply all of types of loads like force, uh, like forces, moments, pressure, translational and rotational displacement, centrifugal forces, follower forces, remote loads, temperatures, and others. Uh, all of available types of loads have been grouped in the ribbon bar. Mm -hmm. And interesting thing is that Midas NFX is uh, Microsoft Excel compatible software, so due to this it's available to import loading from external software on, or measurement devices and interpolate them on your mesh. Midas NFX offers also a rich library of, let's say, let's name it 
connection technology options to simulate many different behaviors between faces, edges of solid and surface bodies. One of them is contact, or we can say contact element. So where exactly, where in your model can we meet with the contact requirement? So the answer is like following. So generally when two separate surfaces touch each other such uh, that they become mutually tangent, they are said to be in contact. Moreover, in the common physical sense, surfaces that are in contact have this basic characteristic. They do not interpenetrate. So this is the, the feature of the, the surfaces in contact. And most of the contact connections are nonlinear, but this is the another topic to discuss. So I will be not focused on, on this right now, and we will prepare soon another nonlinear training session, and we will explain to you the basic theory. So, but for purposes of the linear static analysis, there is possible to use few contact definitions. And we can choose between the welded contact and the direct, directional sliding definition. So if we take into account the behavior of this contact definition, let's take a look on, on, this, welded, uh, on this welded contact. So in terms of vertical behavior, no separation will be permitted. Uh, and no separation in the horizontal behavior. The difference between the bidirectional sliding is that in horizontal behavior, the sliding will occur. So we have these two contact types in the, in the linear static analysis. And to minimize the time uh, which is required to pre-process to pre uh, pre your model, Midas NFX has been equipped with automatic contact generation tool. And this contact connection, uh, connections uh, can be generated between surfaces uh, of the parts uh, from the assemblies. So for example, master surfaces are colored in blue and slave are colored in red. And this um, will make to identify the surfaces more easily. Now let's take a look on the best part for FEA analysis which is post-processing and I'm talking about this because the whole pre-processing and solving process takes usually the most of the time for your simulation. So after spending this time uh, of waiting on waiting for the solution, it's always good to have right and efficient tools to display achieved results, understand them and prepare documentation very easily. So similar to the rest of tools in NFX, the post-processing functionality has been grouped inside results ribbon sheet, and we have there a lot of options to display our model using uh, many color uh, variants. Uh, there are as well the tools for advanced post-processing like probing, graphing, result calculation, and, and others. All of output vectors um, you, you will find inside the results works tree. And you have also full control on the number and type of the requested output data. So to the right, there is a legend related to the contour type when this contour type is uh, displayed. So you can also hide this legend, move the different planes um, of your work plane depending on your need. So some of the examples of contour types um, have been presented on the next slide. So we can display the results using full contours, lines, for example. Model can be displayed without uh, colors, but uh, with the form shape, with mesh, without mesh, uh, and let's say transparent, for example. So in NFX, it's also possible to display your results using probe tool to get the information about uh, your results directly from node or element. So very interesting post-processing uh, feature is displaying the graph directly on analyzed part. And all of results data are also compatible with Microsoft Excel. So after calculation, uh, you can generate the analysis report automatically and customize it as you want. And some very sophisticated post-processing tools like such as clipping plane, ISO surface, vector plot, etc., allows the user 
to view the results in a graphical manner effectively. So these are some examples. And now let's switch di uh, directly uh, to the uh, software to NFX and my colleague Saipen. Uh, we will uh, he will perform some some practical example for you. Yeah, I think you see uh, the software uh, opened. Now, I'll show you first a demonstration in the designer mode, uh, and then uh, I will show you a presentation in the analyst mode. So until now, we show you some slides, some uh, theory, let's say. Now let's say how to uh, practice and how to uh, do that uh, in the software. So first of all, um, I will go first in the designer mode. So you can go very quickly from the designer mode to the analysis mode just by uh, switching the option here on the right of your screen. So designer mode is much more simple than uh, the analysis mode like Peter told you. And it's more or less like uh, you could compare it to uh, uh, software for designers. So you can simply import uh, any CAD model and perform some simple uh, operation of it. Okay, so I open a new project and you see that all the icons have been activated. I will uh, just change the background because I prefer this one. Okay, and I will begin by importing a CAD model. So I go in the import function. So you see you have import CAD, uh, import DXF or Nastran or STL file. So I will import a CAD file. You have the choice between uh, a lot of CAD format and FX supports uh, files coming from Parasolid, which is the main kernel of NFX, but as well the uh, ACES, STEP, IGS, uh, ProE, CATIA, SOLIDWORKS, UniGraphics, Inventor, etc. So uh, let's open the model. Okay, so this is, um, it's not a simple model, it's a kind of, uh, it's a LCD panel uh, handler equipment actually. So it's a real model, you can, uh, and I'll show you how you can analyze such model very quickly. So this model is composed of 18 parts uh, that you can see here in the walk tree. So you have a view of the contacts, the material which are assigned, uh, the geometry parts. Uh, now the first thing I'll do is that I create a material to assign to this uh, model. So I click on material and I go in the material tab. So you have a database of materials. So I'll select uh, maybe some aluminium. And if you select one you see the coefficients here uh, will be automatically filled. So uh, you have linear type, non-linear type of material as well. So here I will use only linear uh, material. I click on OK. And you see now it has been added in this. So to assign that to your model, in the designer mode it's actually uh, quite simple. So I switch to the material color so you can see which material is actually assigned to each part. And you only have to drag and drop uh, the material on the right parts. So right now you see the color change because some of them have assigned the new aluminium alloy and the others are uh, still uh, using the alloy steel. Okay, so I'll go back to the geometry column. So the next step will be to simplify a bit this model because this is a big problem of CAD model is that they're very complex, uh, especially the model coming from uh, designers. So they want to, to simulate something which is very complex and in simulation the best is to get something simple in order to get uh, correct answers. So you have a lot of small holes and small fillets that I will simplify uh, using the simplification tool in NFX. So you have some automatic tool uh, which will help you to uh, let's say heal or uh, uh, simplify your model. 
So if I select all the holes, for example, you see on the model they will be displayed in different colors, uh, example. Okay, come back to this uh, model. So I find the small holes uh, below 25 millimeter. I select them and remove them just in few clicks. So uh, the model is now a bit cleaner and oh, sorry, uh, I think maybe 25 millimeters is a bit too big so I'll come back. So you can always come back to the next step which is a good thing. You go in the bar here and you click here and everything what you did can be uh, undone. So this is a very powerful thing as well. So uh, why did I come back? Because you see that if I select 25 there are some holes here in red that actually I shouldn't suppress, so you, you should be aware of that. So I will select smaller holes of 15 millimeter. Okay, and remove them. So you should be careful with this simplification tool. You shouldn't simplify everything. Um, and for the fillets, I will simplify the fillets which are smaller than 25 millimeter. So click on 25 and remove them. Okay, so uh, now if you look at the model, it's much uh, more suitable for simulation, let's say. So uh, next step will be to associate some contacts between the parts because it's an assembly. So I click on the contact, I select all the parts here, and for the type of the contact, I will choose welded. So you have other types of contacts for nonlinear analysis types, so here just select welded. And uh, in a few seconds you see that 26 contact pairs have been uh, created. Now what you can do is select a part, for example, right click, and in the menu you have display the contacts to the selected part. So if you do that, you'll see uh, the contacts which are associated to a specific part. So it's very useful to see if the contacts have been created in the correct way. Otherwise, you have to check uh, the model. Okay, so now I'll create the boundary condition and the load. So I will do that before the meshing. You could do it after as well. It uh, depends. So uh, I'll select these two faces right-click and I'll fix them. So you can do it directly like that using the right-click menu or you can uh, select a force or in the menu here, like here I select the force, I select these two faces, I enter value, let's say 200 Newton. Okay, now I have my uh, boundary condition. Okay, uh, let's um, continue. So uh, we have the meshing to do. So uh, click on auto mesh. And uh, select all the parts here. I unselect these uh, two parts. And I will, let's say, uh, decrease a bit the size of the meshing. Okay, so you can apply. So, also, uh, I was showing you, so you have some uh, hexa type of machine. So, for example, um, you can select some uh, mesh that you created on some parts. So, uh, I select this part, for example and you can delete uh, the mesh that has been done before and uh, use the auto mesh hybrid measure. So if you do that, you'll have much, uh, so it will use actually um, 
the combination of hexa and tetra element at the same time. So generally the hexa, the hybrid meshing takes a bit more time to mesh, but uh, it will accelerate a lot the calculation of the result and it will also be much more accurate because you have less nodes in the model. So as you can see here now, this uh, meshing is uh, much better in this part. So uh, now the next step is just to create uh, another case. So you can do it like that or you can go in the tab here. Click on general, uh, linear static. So here you choose the type of analysis you want to perform. So here I'll do simple linear static analysis, but you see you have much more types of analysis available in NFX. I click on OK. And now I'll perform this analysis. So as soon as you perform the analysis, uh, everything will be sent to the solver who will uh, begin to uh, solve the problem, so using the algorithm. And then when it's over, uh, it will send back the results that you can uh, display in the post process. So you can see the, uh, the process of solving in the output window. So you see there's a percentage here. And it's almost over. Okay, so now I got my results. So uh, I should tell that my computer is very slow, so <laughs> I'm a bit sorry about that. It's only a 32 byte uh, laptop, so I should request a new one. So uh, you see here, uh, you have the three types of results which are basically uh, given. And if you want to insert more results, you can click here and you will have much more results available. Like, for example, the reaction uh, that you can check or uh, the grid forces, which are the applied force. Uh, or you can uh, check the contacts between the force and you see it will appear here on the left. So if you check here, for example, you have a view of the boundary the loads, the contact between the parts. Here you have the form misses stresses. Uh, you can see at the same time the difference because on the right I use the tetra mesh and on the left I use the hybrid meshing. So you have quite a difference between the two because uh, hybrid meshing is much more accurate than uh, Um Now you have a lot of options uh, to view the results. Uh, you have, for example, uh, animation, so uh, if you want to see the animation, the form shape, uh, and the form shape. Of course, this has been increased a lot, so displacement is not so big in the reality. And because it's linear static, so you should keep it in a small uh, displacement. Uh, you have some tools like the clipping plane, for example, that you can cut uh, the model like that by drag and dropping it on the screen uh, or it's useful to see what is going inside the model. Uh, you have for example the ISO surface value which will give you all the value which are superior to a certain uh, value. I hide the edges, so now you see uh, the value of displacement which is superior to this value, for example. And you have the probe tool which will give you the value of the displacement uh, in any point of the model. And you can extract some values and to put it in a table. So this is uh, particularly useful for nonlinear type of analysis. Uh, we'll have a webinar next week about the webinar type of uh, the nonlinear type of analysis. So you'll have a full uh, theory and uh, examples about it.
Uh, you have the on curve diagram, which is also uh, useful if you want to display, let's say, curve directly uh, on the model, like uh, like this one, for example. So you have a view of the displacement directly on the part. And uh, if you want to show only one part of the assembly, it's always possible to go uh, in the model window and, for example, display only uh, one specific part. Okay, so you, you have a view, for example, this part. So I show you the edge here. Uh, you can different contour. Maybe I'll show you the stress because it's... Uh, okay, so now you view the stresses on this specific part. So you can analyze big assembly like that very uh, easily. Okay, now let's uh, go into the analysis mode and uh, see what has changed. So this is the mode which is simplified for uh, designers, the designer mode. Um, now you can convert any model from the designer mode to uh, the analysis mode. Simply uh, by uh, switching the mode from one to another. So uh, I'll go here in analysis mode. It will uh, ask you if you want to change the, to the mode. The thing is that you cannot uh, come back to the designer mode because uh, some types of element that you can use in the analysis mode are not compatible with the designer mode. So this is why uh, you can go in the this advanced mode, but you can not go back. So if you look now in the walk tree, you have uh, the difference between geometry uh, elements and mesh elements. So this is a big difference because now you can walk on geometric parts and on mesh totally separately. So you could create a mesh from uh, nothing, from extrusion or sweeping. And I'll show you an example about that uh, right after. But before, let me show you about the options you have here in the advanced mode. So as Peter was uh, telling you, there's a full uh, tab for the geometry modeling. So you can model uh, some uh, geometry in 3D inside the preprocessor of this analysis mode. You have the Boolean operation here, you have the types of operation like the division of the solid or uh, uh, surface extrusion or um, revolve uh, translation of solids, uh, mirror operation or a different type of shape. Room. Okay. Um, to answer your question uh, that you asked before, so uh, first how to create groups of elements. So this is uh, simple. You go into the mesh uh, mesh tab, the mesh sets here. You click uh, right here. You create a new mesh set. So you see it will appear uh, here. Now uh, you have to press F2 in order to change the name. So uh, I don't know. Uh, set, uh, we'll just give a name set2 and then press enter. So now you have a new mesh set which is uh, which has no mesh inside. So now you right click again and you have include, exclude elements and nodes. So if you click here, you will be able to include some elements or nodes in these mesh sets. So you can select them directly on the model. So let's say I will select uh, anything, just this part for example of the mesh and include that in this new mesh set. So you see the color has changed because he, it is not assigned to this mesh set. And if I show only this mesh set, you see that I have only uh, one mesh set displayed. So I can hide the geometry as well. So now I have only the mesh uh, on the screen. Now you ask me about the, uh, how to check the ID uh, and the information about the nodes. Well, you have several options. The most easy one is to use the query node element. So you click here. It's a small button in the bar. And you can enter an ID of uh, the node or an ID of a filament. You can as well select directly on the screen the node you want to get the ID. So if you, uh, I'll show you again all the elements of the model. Uh, 
So if I try to enter this one, you see, yeah, maybe there was no uh, node with the uh, ID 3000, but you see here it will be shown in the model like that. So you have the node which is uh, here, so you know exactly where is this node in the model. So this is particularly useful when you have a problem somewhere in the in the model. And so in this output window, it's telling you uh, you have a problem at this node, and you can check where is your problem and can try to fix it. Okay, and uh, to see the free edges, uh, which was your third question, you go in the mesh tab, uh, and here you have all the options for the mesh, and if you go on the right, you have check uh, mesh topology option, and in this mesh topology, you can check the free faces in no range. So if you click here, you'll see all uh, the free faces. So actually, uh, here I'm using contacts, so you see uh, that I have some free surface between the parts, so this is totally normal. Um, now, if you uh, don't want to use contacts, uh, you just want to connect the nodes together, uh, there's a possibility to do that as well. So in this case, you have to come back to the geometry model. So here, uh, I'll display it again with the shading. And uh, you have to use the geometry tool, and you have something, it's a new function of 2014, uh, called auto connection. So if you click here, you select all the parts, and it will directly uh, connect uh, the uh, parts together. So it will generate the sharing phase between all the parts. And after that, you can uh, simply do the meshing, and uh, you should shouldn't have any free phase between the parts. So uh, okay. So here you have a preview of what you will get, uh, what it will do. So it's uh, particularly useful to create this kind of uh, sharing phase. But if you're using contacts, you don't need actually to create the sharing phase between the parts, which is the, the good part about the contacts. Okay, now uh, let's go to this uh, second example, which uh, is a bit more simple than this one, but it will show you the basic uh, workflow to create a simple uh, model. So I open a new uh, project in this uh, announce mode. So the session is a bit longer than uh, one hour. I hope uh, you're okay with that. So um, here you have the basic uh, interface. So you have a grid and basically all the type of sketching you will do will uh, be done in this grid. So you have some options to uh, modify and move the grid. So uh, the the most simple way to do that is to right click with the mouse and you have move the walk plane option. So you click here and you have a small window which appears. So you have uh, three ways to move this uh, plane. You can move it to the reference plane, so select the reference plane. So I will do that. And you see the sketching plane just moves like that. So now uh, I sketch something on this uh, plane. So for that, I go in the geometry tools, and I will use the polyline tool. So I click on polyline. You can create a polyline in 2D, so in this plane, or you can create it in 3D uh, as well. So uh, I select directly uh, the nose like that. And if you connect here, OK, it will be created. So uh, you have some, um, what is called the snap options. So if you click here in the snap, you will be able to define uh, how the, the, the mouse will be snapped. So here it's uh, snapping the grid uh, points, the point snap, the middle snap, and the nodes. But you can uh, as well snap the perpendicular uh, shapes, the center. The, so it's useful to know how to use uh, well the snap to create the, the modeling. Um, okay, go back in this view. So now I model the basic shape. What I will do is I will move again the walk plane. And this time I'll choose this basic plane, but I will put the origin uh, to this point. So click OK. Now you got uh, like that. 
and I will sketch a rectangle like that. Okay, so now I have uh, something like that. And next step, move again the work plane along this face. Now you see the grid is a bit too short, so in this case you have to uh, extend the grid. So uh, to do that, you have define grid option with a small hammer. So you click here, and you can define the widths of the grid, which will be the size of the the small uh, uh, squares. And this is the number of elements in the grid. So here I will and say take 100 elements, so you see the grid will be much larger. Uh, and what I will do is define a sweep curve, so I'll click here, because I want to sweep afterwards, so I'll show you what I will do. Uh, I will sketch kind of beam. So I will walk, now, now I create simple curves, and I will directly create the mesh from this curve, so I will not create the solid element. So I will go into 2D meshing, and in 2D meshing you have several types of options. You have auto face, auto area, map face, map area. So uh, face means that you have to create a surface to map it. Area means that you can use just edges. So here I will use map area, and in this case it will be automatic mapped boundary. So I just select the edges from here. So uh, you have a basic uh, mapping like that. Okay. So this is a 2D, and then do the same for this uh, side. Same size. Okay. Now I get two mesh sets uh, in 2D, and what I'll do is I will just sweep these uh, mesh sets to create 3D mesh. So I go in the sweep option. 2D to 3D element. Uh, I select the element from this face first, and I will delete the source 2D mesh because I don't need any more, and select the guide curve, which will be uh, this one. So if I click on preview, you see you have something like that. So I click on apply, and I got my 3D mesh. Now let's create the other side here. So in order to select more uh, efficiently, you can either select on the screen or you can select in the work tree the mesh set. So you click here and select this guide curve. And here I'll define an end, ratio, end scale ratio of 0 0.5. Okay. Okay, now I got uh, some part of my model. And what I'll do is just mirror all that. So I click on mirror option. I select the two mesh sets. That I click here to copy that. And I mirror a second time along this uh, plane. Okay, now I got a full model. So you see if you go to the mesh sets here that I have uh, eight mesh sets, uh, nine with the default mesh set, but there's nothing inside. So now I just select all that, right click, and I will merge them together. Okay. So now I got a basic model that I can uh, study. So I will assign some boundary condition to it. So uh, let's take the view here. Oh yes, uh, maybe there's something important that you don't know is how to use the, the mouse and how to rotate the model. Because uh, I often don't really explain that, but it's useful to know how to do that more efficiently. So uh, in, uh, to do that, you can uh, press the center button, uh, the center uh, roll button of your mouse. If you press this center button, you keep it pressed, you can rotate the model like that. Uh, if you press
press the, the key of sit control of your keyboard and then you press the roll of your mouse, you will move the model like that. So if you know these two tricks, it will be much more uh, easy to, to work on the model. Uh, it was just uh, to, to mention that. Okay, now let's uh, assign the boundary condition. So um, I go here in constraint and I select the element from the nodes from this face. So you see that you can either select the nodes or either select the geometry. So here I created the mesh, so I don't have geometry associated. So I will directly constrain the nodes. And let's uh, create some uh, pressure. So the pressure will be associated on this face on the model. So uh, I click on pressure. The pressure will be associated to 3D element face. Now how can I select that? Uh, the best way to do that is to use the selection toolbar. So you have a selection toolbar here. All the options to modify the type of selection are here. So there are some things useful like, for example, the polygon selection. So I can, uh, like that, drag it on the shape. I double click and then you see all, only the element of this face will be selected. Now um, let's choose the direction. So pressure can be normal, of course, but you can also select a specific direction. So here let's choose Y direction for the pressure. Let's enter value. And what you can do as well is associate it, um, a function to this pressure. So uh, I click on function and I, you can even calculate it from a coordinate for example. So let's say uh, 2x minus 4 multiplied by uh, x minus 4. Calculate and now you get the function that will be associated with this pressure. So I click on OK and now associate the functions here. And click on OK. Now I got my load, I got my boundary. Now there's still something that I need to do that I didn't do is to assign the material. So uh, to assign the material you have first the material creation. So like it's the same then in the design mode. So you have isotropic material, 2D, autotropic, 3D. Uh, fluid material, uh, rigid material. So here, just create isotropic, and it will be linear type of material. Let's say, uh, let's take again an aluminium. Okay. Now you have to create a property which is going along this uh, element. So uh, here, this is the mesh set that I created. You see there is no name, it means that no property is assigned for the model. So if you try to make the analysis like that, it will tell you that you need to assign, assign a property. So I click on modify and I assign the uh, solid property to this uh, element. So if you uh, create like that an element, you see that you have several options. So in 3D actually there's um, the basic solid element and you have also composite element which can be defined here. In 2D elements you have much more so it is in this window that you define the plate, the membrane, the surface, uh, the plane strain element and the other type like the composite shell. Okay, now I, uh, let's just create the analysis case general linear static click on OK and I can perform uh, my analysis so uh, no just have to wait for uh, from the end
Okay, now we got the results. So basically, you have this, this translation. This it will uh, give you something like that. The uh, phone is stresses. Then you can check here. Um, let's check the I is a value. So uh, it will give you something like that. Okay, now um, it's uh, almost over. So um, I will answer some questions uh, in live, let's say. So if you have uh, other questions, please uh, ask them uh, directly uh, right now. Is there uh, any questions? Or maybe Piotr already answered everything. So to complete, if you want to find more tutorials, so uh, you can either go on the Midas NFX website, or if you have an iPad, for example, you can uh, download the app Midas NFX Tutorials, uh, and you'll find a lot of tutorials for NFX in this app. So it's very useful because you'll have everything in PDF in, in your iPad, so you can walk quickly with uh, this. Uh, as well, we'll have a lot of uh, tutorials video on uh, our YouTube channel, uh, Midas NFX. So you just search on YouTube Midas NFX and you'll find uh, all that. And if you want something specific, you can always uh, contact us. So uh, I think you know my email is cyprian at midasit.com. So I just wrote it in the, in the window and don't hesitate to contact us if you need more uh, information or training or anything. Okay, then if you have no more uh, questions, um, just uh, see you next week, I hope, because we'll have another session with the, um, which will be theoretical and as well uh, demonstrative on nonlinear uh, analysis. So uh, to be very interesting, and I hope uh, you will join next week as well. So you can find all the webinar session on the, the website midasnfx.com. Okay, goodbye. Yes, and I'll send you the video uh, which has been recorded uh, by email.